people on the dais, respected uh, Rajak, respected Dharmesh Jain, and uh, leader of uh, BJP and also a prominent person of the industry, respected uh, Ravi Veed, dear friends. This is a very important event. The people who have been doing business, handling the one of the successful sector, real estate sector, and uh, emerged as uh, successful entrepreneurs, successful business people. In the process, people who have created wealth for the country and wealth for, uh, of course, for yourself. Now, the inaugural session is just now completed where uh, the concerned minister my leader, Minister for Urban Development, has addressed all of you. And uh, in the following sessions also, you are going to have few of the prominent people who are in the government and also from the neighboring states, they are going to participate in this uh, conference. Now, in the introduction, Mr. Rajak was saying, in the last conference, it was the despondency. And today, the conference is overflowing. <laughs> Participants are same. Delegates are doing the same kind of business. But the change has come, not only here, in the entire country, the change is uh, perceptible. A month back, I had an opportunity to go to Sri Lanka to participate in leadership conference of Asian political parties in Colombo. I had an opportunity to interact with uh, leaders of different political parties belonging to Asia. There also I had uh, seen the change of perception. Everybody was uh, eager, attentive, and interested in interacting with uh, me or my colleagues from India how India is going to do in coming days, there was a sense of excitement and also hope. This uh, had seen in that conference. And you are also witnessing and experiencing the same thing when our uh, Honorable Prime Minister is going to different countries and addressing the gatherings there. So one thing has changed the entire country, that is the change of leadership. Now China is, uh, which we always sometimes see it as a competitor, or sometimes in a particular context, sometimes it as an adversary. They are also inter interested in doing business with India. China's interest in doing business with India has increased manifold. Of course, the situation is not, uh, you know, different uh, when we come to Pakistan. Pakistan leadership also is uh, 
looking to India with a changed attitude. For all of us, Pakistan is a, a kind of adversary. But their leadership is also evincing a lot of interest in having a dialogue with India, with Indian government. So, if we take out one common thing which is making all this to happen is the present government and its leadership, particularly the leadership of Sri Narendra Modi, this is the leadership which is uh, responsible for this change of perception in the entire world and in the entire country and among the entrepreneurs and business class. There is a kind of definiteness. Now things are going to happen and uh, the decisions will be taken. Now everybody feels that there will not be any standstill or impasse or deadlock or any kind of jam. Flow of decisions will be there and the flow of activity you will have uninterruptedly. This is the sense with which everybody is interacting and everybody is uh, looking. So this is the change which has made the entire conference a meaningful exercise and entire activity has, uh, you know, uh, changed the atmosphere. So, in my view, this is a context in which we have assembled here, and this context I wanted to uh, reiterate. Now, coming to this business sector, this is a very, very important business sector for Indian economy particularly when we are thinking of reviving the economy or igniting the growth process, triggering the activity and triggering the, the dynamism. When we talk about these things, definitely the sector which is, becomes important for all of us is the real estate sector and the building sector. There are a hundred problems, under hundred areas Indian leadership and Indian government has to address in order to achieve the objective of establishing the nation as a superior nation. But what is the escalator? In order to achieve all those things, what is the key point? Then definitely there are few escalators. Among those few escalators, this real estate and housing sector is that escalator. Engine of growth. If we are able to establish the trust and confidence in this sector and if we are able to ignite the growth here, then it is going to have impact in all other sectors, direct and indirect. Employment creation is a very important uh, job responsibility for the policy makers. The labor market is a very important market and every year there is an addition. The population growth is there and the population growth is adding the responsibility and other things to us. Almost 13 million people are every year joining the labor market. And in coming years, this is a country of the young people. In the entire world, if you see the developed countries and the western countries, they are aging countries. And the population there, the consists of the old people. And for them, problems are different. However, the country like India, where the young population is concentrated, you don't have this kind of population, huge population anywhere in the world, even in China. We have surpassed China. Few days back, the report which has been published has clearly said we have outnumbered China in the young population. 
and below 50, if you take it, it's a 63 percent. So it's the young population which is creating a greater challenge for the policy makers that is the additional employment generation every year for the next quarter century. And where from we can create the employment? Government is not going to create employment within its own sector. This has been realized. Now even the political parties which used to advocate the kind of socialism in those days are now they have, they have discarded that kind of vision. They are coming to terms that employment can be created only in the private sector. And in India, private sector is not a small sector. Today, the private sector in India is the dominating sector. If you take agriculture and the industry put together, it is the sector which is driving and which is sustaining the Indian economy. It is not that we are going to introduce the private sector into the economy. Private sector is sustaining the Indian economy. So after agriculture, if the growth-related employment you have to add or if you have to create, that is the real estate and the housing sector which is going to create, which is going to give us. <laughs> Who must be valued? Who must be given the respect? In India, the person who gives the employment must be given the highest respect in this country in the coming next 25 years. <laughs> so the people who are sitting here in this hall, who have come from all over the country and the pan-Indian representation, they are the persons who are shouldering the responsibility of reconstructing India. <laughs> Individually, I, have, I may have a problem. Individually, I may have a shortcoming. Shortcoming or any false or any wrongdoing. But sectorally, if I have to speak, this is a sector which is going to reconstruct the Indian glory. Yeah. This we have to understand. The present, even in the last few years, the high trajectory of growth we have achieved, with whose contribution we have achieved, this is a sector which has contributed. 6% of the GDP in coming years you have, the expectation is far more. We may reach 13%, 14%. Any big goal in this country can never be bigger than housing for all in this country. Because house is most sacred responsibility and sacred job in this country. Providing a house, it is not just an economic value, it is not an economic contribution, I am using the word sacred because house and marriage are sacred things in the country. Performing the marriage and constructing the house are taken as twin responsibilities, as sacred twin responsibilities in this country. So the people who are involved in the sacred mission of constructing houses for all can, be nev can never be treated as uh, the people doing something in our species are something not so important. So it is not just political, it's a national mission. And there is a shortage of, there is a gap. Housing for all are creating the houses. 12 million, 13 million, 20 million, 26 million, the gap is getting widened. People who want to own the house in their lifetime. You know, some of the people I know are doing good job and their ultimate aim in their life is to own a house in, after doing 25 years of service. That is the kind of people we have. So in such a scenario, providing houses for all is a very important challenge for the government and also entrepreneurs. And the people who have assembled, I am, again, one, one more thing I want to say. This is a huge market. It is not that you are going to create the market. The market is available. Market is there. There are business people in the world who want to create market in order to satisfy, meet, or to sustain the economic activity. Here, we are not going to create the market. Market is available. 
if indian domestic players are able to utilize this market share in the next quarter century in coming years in africa and in other countries maybe our entrepreneurs will become players in those countries if we do not become players in this country how we can become players at the global level i don't understand so the government job is to promote the entrepreneurs in the domestic market giving primacy to them it is not level playing field it is an encouragement if i am not a player in my own market i cannot become a player in the different countries market so i cannot play a role in other country this we have to understand japanese are coming today and want to play here a role without japanese government's encouragement in their country respective country they could not have become the kind of player which they are today so market is there and the indian aspiration and ambition is there entrepreneur quality is is there you need not have to teach the entrepreneur quality to the indian people so now there is a demand to create the crop of entrepreneurs a generation of entrepreneurs millions of entrepreneurs so am i preaching capitalism definitely it is a people's capitalism it is a people's capitalism it is not neither state capitalism or monopolistic capitalism i am taking a different line away from the monopolistic capitalism or the state capitalism this real estate market in india it will be unique where you will have millions of entrepreneurs playing a role and constructing the houses for the country developing the land for the people's needs this is a, a very important thing and this is a political philosophical line and what our uh, honorable prime minister is now embarking on to achieve this so in coming years the national need and the national mission and the available market and the creation of employment as a part of the mission and the availability of the entrepreneurs who are ready to take the risk and do the job and when all these ingredients and all the components needed for the growth are there and available so what is the missing thing the missing thing was the government and the policy makers decisiveness which has come now i understand the foreign direct investment in the smart cities now 100 cities have been declared and in the real estate and the building activity money had come and we are expecting some more to come but ultimately in the even real estate sector and housing business the role of foreign investment is always an additional thing a supplementary thing and a complementary thing i am not against and the government is not against but the domestic capital and domestic player is very important and this is going to have the dynamo effect now steel cement brick all other things so this is what i want to say and in coming years you have a job nobody can disturb nobody can distract and nobody can change the course of the direction if we have to achieve the national objective of establishing this country as a one of the important country at the global level we want to see india as a member of the security council become part of the global regula regulatory circuit and millions of people living without houses how it is possible to see even so in coming years any government wedded to this national objective cannot be part of 
creating obstacles for the business. So now you are the people in the construction industry and real estate industry. And Narendra Modi ji has said, now onwards I am going to dismantle each day one law. So now prepare the list. Prepare the list. Present the list to the ministers. We are not against. If revenues are going to get increased, if benefits are going to get accrued, then dismantling of laws, which we call as uh, obstacles and outdated and redundant, definitely it becomes a part of the national pride to dismantle. This is a very important thing. And uh, I see a bright future for this sector, this industry, in the next five years. But we have a responsibility. Glory does not come without uh, fulfilling the duties, responsibilities. Real estate, real estate sector now ultimately when we call it as the engine of the growth then it must be seen as a respectable sector and respect can never come from outside respect has to be earned by the people who are part of the business sector and uh, I am not going to say what are those shortcomings because if I say shortcomings to the people who are not in the business, then it becomes a knowledge exercise. But the people who are part of the exercise need not be told about the shortcomings of these. You know what are those things. And those things have to be rectified. And this government has got the mandate for the change. Change is not only leadership change. Change in the work culture, change in the values, change in the direction, all those things are part of the mandate. And uh, our Honorable Prime Minister is uh, taking the leading role in it. So in such a situation, definitely, it becomes uh, the responsibility of all of us to understand the mandate. It is not only for the leaders of the government or even leaders of the business. To understand the internal craving and aspirations of the people. Everybody wants to have the change, including the people in the business. So in order to create that kind of thing, we also need to change our attitudes and our transactional behaviors and uh, our approaches. Now, Mr. Razak was saying that uh, Swachh Bharat, I appeal to all of you, along with your business, cleaning India is uh, definitely a part of the it can be because it is linked to our business. Need to have a clean India. So in this exercise, uh, as a businessman and as a business group or as a company, what we can do in an accountable way? Along with government or independent of the government? In a local, localized area or at the national level? How we can become part of this clean India? This is also a very important thing and my appeal because this is going to help all of us in changing the image of the sector. If we are uh, taking initiative in owning the responsibility, then the social impression and image will also get changed. And another important thing which I would like to mention, which is going to get discussed in the following session, is the skilling India. 
there is a gap. So far, every year, as I told, 13 million people are joining the labor market. Now, 3.5 million are getting trained in the skill development. There is a huge gap. In coming days, particularly in the construction sector, the migration, the ready available people who are displaced from the rural villages and who are not able to get employment in the rural villages, they are coming to cities in search of some kind of alternative work and they are doing labor work without any kind of skill. That is eroding your profit and the quality of work and the productivity it is getting affected. In coming years, in order to have the profit aspect, ensuring the profit, profit and the quality and the productivity, unless we ensure all these things, remaining in the field as a competitive sector is uh, very difficult. So how the skilling India can be, is a national mission and it is a national responsibility where government is uh, giving top priority in this. I had interacted with a number of people individually in the past five, six years about this aspect. And uh, if there is a single sector which can contribute in a significant way, this, this is the real estate and the construction sector. <laughs> One sector which can make a significant contribution to Skill India campaign, that is this sector. And there is a gap. When the government is not able to meet the needs, then our uh, importance uh, becomes more and more. It, 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 importance is getting increased. In such a situation, skilling India, this sector and the leaders of this uh, business sector must have to take and particularly in the construction area, how in, in uh, different cities we can have a targeted plans and how we can create infrastructure to skill India with our sponsorship or with our uh, support, this is also very important thing. And now lastly, I would like to make one important point, that is the housing, which I, in my introduction I have made, housing is a very important. But in coming days, we have to analyze the market. Low-end market is very huge. High-end market is, uh, that way it is uh, not so huge. So in terms of material, in terms of technology, and in terms of uh, other things, how we can reduce the cost and provide uh, to the low-end society, in the low-end market, this is uh, something related to not tax uh, concessions alone. Demanding the tax concessions uh, for, uh, from any business leadership summit is a, is a natural thing, obvious. But how we are going to create new business models and new methods, new strategies for this. Like civil aviation sector, the cost effective economy. In this, how to create a, a low end uh, vibrant market in this sector by coming out with innovative things. This is also, I feel, because this is going to be for the, both the government and also the market suppliers, meeting the low-end market needs is a very important in coming 25 years. I am saying 25 years. So, this is also another point which I would like to mention. BJP as a political party, because I have come here as a general secretary of a political party, which is uh, in government, BJP as a political party has always promoted entrepreneurship and business. We have never taken anti-business line. 
and we have always felt the private sector is important and domestic sector is more important and by strengthening and encouraging the domestic players we will be able to create the muscle of indian economy so with this uh, important points with these things my appeal is this sector must understand the transition decipher the transition in a correct way and uh, chart the fresh track with confidence and also trust in the leadership and become the partner in creating the glory or glorious india thank you